All right, so uh, as Claudia mentioned, uh, I'm going to be talking about whales and how they evolved to be uh, the really specialized predators that they are today uh, and how it was really based around uh, things that were happening in the Southern Ocean. So um, whales, uh, not only are they the biggest animals around today, but they're, based on the fossil record, the biggest animals that have ever lived on the planet. So uh, it's pretty amazing that uh, their fate, so to speak, is really dictated by these uh, these phytoplankton, these diatoms that Jeremy was talking about, that uh, are hard to see without uh, without a microscope. Uh, modern whales, uh, there's about 80 different species, and they're divided into two groups. So you have toothed whales, which are uh, your killer whales, uh, dolphins, porpoises, sperm whales, and then there's the filter feeders, which are the blue whales, humpbacks, gray whales, um, all kinds. So both of these animals are incredibly specialized. Um, toothed whales, like the, the orca, the sinister looking one up, up top there, uh, you have these, these really big teeth which are perfectly suited for catching fish and squid. Um, but one thing you may notice is that the shape of the head doesn't really look like what you've seen on Free Willy. Um, uh, what the, these animals have is the, this melon organ sitting on top of their skull, and that lets them uh, use echolocation, very much like bats, uh, when they're in the water to, to help find their prey. Their prey. So uh, the filter feeding whales down below, uh, they've actually lost um, uh, all, of their, all of their teeth, and then they have these really long jaw bones uh, that extend outwards. And then from these, you have these, these hanging filters, they're called baleens. And so what these whales will do is they'll, they'll take a huge mouthful of water with all sorts of krill uh, and algae in it and then um, uh, shoot the, shoot the seawater out through this filter and it works like a sieve. So uh, what they're left with is, is just food. So in order to understand uh, how these animals came to be the way they are, it's important to look, from, look back to where they came from. And being mammals, that means uh, they came from the land. So uh, that guy right there is Pachycetus, and uh, he's about the, the size of a dog, uh, closely related to pigs and camels and uh, those kinds of mammals. And so uh, he would have lived on land, um, and uh, they believed he, he kind of went to the, the water's edge and hunted fish and uh, fed that way. So after him, uh, we get these Ambulocetus, and uh, they kind of look like furry crocodiles, and that's, that's sort of how they behaved, actually. They would, uh, it's thought that they would spend most of their time in the water uh, and sort of ambush, uh, ambush their, their prey, which was also fish, but they were tied to the land in order to reproduce. So as you can see um, from these skeletons, Ambulocetus on top and then Pachycetus on the bottom, uh, as the whale lineage uh, went along, these animals got bigger and bigger, and you're start starting to trend towards the modern whales that we see today. But eventually, they would have had to divorce themselves from land entirely. So that's where you get uh, animals like Duradon, um, which was bigger again uh, and would have spent its entire life in the water. So in order to understand um, ecosystems that can support animals this, this big, uh, we need to sort of look at modern ecosystems that, that support the whales. So if we look at the Southern Ocean today, uh, it has incredibly short food chains. And this is really important in transferring energy from, uh, from the primary producers, which are the, the diatoms there that get their energy from the sun, all the way up to these huge animals. Because every time, uh, mammals especially, you lose about 90% of the energy that you, that you eat, uh, so to speak. So in order to get all the energy that's in one piece of krill, they have to eat about 10 krill. And they need a lot more energy than that to support such a huge body. So they, uh, the short food chains are, are vital to, to supporting such an enormous animal. So this is uh, the figure that Andrew showed. And you can see the, the ocean temperatures decreasing through time. And so uh, right about here is where we have Duradon. And so right around here, you see this steep drop in temperature. And it's right at this point that we start seeing the filter feeding whales appear and the toothed whales appear. So this seems counterintuitive uh, because when we think of cold places, we usually think sort of bleak, desolate, uh, something like this. I mean, if you were to compare Antarctica today, uh, on land, there's not, there's not a lot of life uh, compared to 
lower latitudes, such as New Zealand, you see these kind of plush, um, plush forests filled, filled with life. So in the oceans, the, the opposite is often true. So there's the Gulf of Mexico, um, and that's where the crater or the uh, meteor was supposedly to have hit. Uh, and when people go down there, they, they talk about this kind of crystal clear blue water. And well, the reason uh, the reason it's so crystal clear is because nothing's living in it. Nothing's uh, there's there's no algae that's uh, that's there to feed all these other animals. So comparing that to uh, Antarctica, the Weddell Sea over there, you have this huge green spot, and that's just this enormous phytoplankton bloom. And so because this thing is hundreds of kilometers across, and it supports uh, all kinds of animals, especially krill, which then feed everything else. So uh, some of these phytoplankton are uh, diatoms, as Jeremy mentioned, and uh, these beautiful shells that they make are made out of uh, silica. And so they flourish in cold, bright water that is filled with silica, but they're obviously very dependent on the sun, so they exist at the surface, generally. Um, and so, uh, as you can see, silica around Antarctica, it's incredibly rich in the surface waters, which is uh, a stark contrast to what you see in the other oceans. But uh, why is that? So that all has to do with how ocean divides itself. Um, based, on, based on densities, you have, you have high density water at the bottom and then lower density water sitting on top of that. So right here you have density and it's lower, lower at, the, at the top and then it increases as you go down. So this makes this big gradient right here, and that, that makes it really difficult for nutrients that is uh, sunk below where the diatoms can reach them to, to get to the top. So what's special about the Southern Ocean is that their temperature at the surface is not much different than the temperature at the bottom because it's so cold all the way through. So this makes a smaller, uh, smaller gradient here, and then you get a lot more uh, upwelling and bottom to top mixing is a lot more, uh, a lot more easy to carry out. So that's exactly what's happening with the silica. So you have these diatoms living at the surface, depending on the sun, and then uh, rather than having all the silica sink away from them where they can't get at it, this, uh, this density gradient that's so small uh, makes it possible for currents to, to uh, get, the, uh, get the silica up to the top where the diatoms can use them. So what does this mean for whales? Uh, this, is, uh, this is a picture of us near... Um, near Port Lockroy, and it was sort of walking through this kind of whale graveyard type thing uh, where the skeletons of these whales had washed up. And it, it's a really, it's a weird experience. It's kind of humbling to walk around uh, the remains of these animals that are so much bigger and stronger than you are. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. But uh, what captivates people about whales is their enormous size. And so from an evolutionary perspective, why be big? Like, why? What does that do for you? So, one thing it does is there, there's a huge cost associated with it. Obviously, these animals, being so big to power such a huge body, need to eat an enormous amount of food. But they can also store this food, and uh, that way they can survive for long periods between meals. So, that is ideal for the ocean because food distribution is extremely patchy. So, as the ocean cooled, the Southern Ocean became this sort of paradise for diatoms. Uh, and because there were so many diatoms, they were able to support this huge amount of krill. And uh, as Tom mentioned, this is just uh, the keystone species that supports everything else. So you can see here, uh, as uh, the ancient whales would feed mostly on fish, but then all of a sudden you started getting these huge, dense pockets of food. So you'd have these giant phytoplankton blooms uh, krill feeding on the phytoplankton, and a huge amount of animals uh, coming from all around to feed on the krill. So with such abundant resources, the, uh, the whales were kind of at, at a crossroads, so to speak. Um, the toothed whales evolved the, uh, the use of echolocation so they could find these big patches uh, very quickly and then feed on whatever was feeding on the krill. And the filter feeders uh, lost their teeth, ditched fish altogether as a food source and just started taking down huge amounts of krill in a really efficient way. So this graph is, uh, 
it's comparing temperature, uh, the density, or sorry, the diversity of diatoms, and the diversity of the different types of whales. So you can see as temperature decreases, you get uh, kind of these fluctuations in diatom populations. Uh, and so the more the more diatoms there are, the more species of filter feeders it can support through the krill link. So you can see here it follows it. So you see that pattern there, and then you also see it right here. So you can see that there's it follows it fairly closely between the filter feeders and the diatoms. Um, the the link with the tooth whales is a little bit weaker uh, because there's that buffering level that they don't they don't feed on something that feeds on the diatoms, but they feed on fish which feed on krill which feed on the diatoms. So uh, there is still that link. So uh, in closing, it was the the development of these southern ocean systems that led uh, to the specializations that we see today in modern whales, and it was because of these tiny, tiny um, organisms that you have the biggest organisms uh, ever to have lived uh, existing. All right.